Okay, let's bring in an NDI broadcast video into our Unreal project here. So I've got a brand new project set up. There's nothing else in it. I'm in Unreal 4.25 on a PC and the NDI plugin is installed and working. And I have the NDI section here on my place actors. There is an NDI receiver actor, but I'm not gonna use that. I'll just build this one piece at a time myself so I have a bit more control over the final look. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I do actually have an NDI broadcast going on in the network. So I'm gonna fire up the NDI tools uh, studio monitor. So if I hit my windows key and start typing in studio monitor, I'll get NDI studio monitor here. And this is just part of the standard NDI tools. And I will look for any broadcasts available here. And sure enough, there we are. Uh, I've got my iPhone set up to uh, broadcast its screen over NDI. So I'll choose burner phone display. And this should bring in, yep, here we go. This is what's showing up on my phone live as I kind of scrub around in a Discord feed. And we can see the name. This is really important. The name is all caps burner phone space open parenthesis, capitalized display, close parenthesis. We're going to need this in order to uh, tune and select which uh, broadcast on the network we want to bring into our Unreal project. So burner phone and then display in parentheses. All right, so the broadcast itself is working. Let's get this thing into Unreal. So here is my empty project. I'm going to start by creating a folder in my content area to store all of the NDI component components. So right click and go up to new folder. I will name this NDI receiver and 01 in case we do more receivers later on. Double click to go in there and there's nothing there. So uh, first thing I'll need is an NDI receiver asset. So I just right click, go to media and choose NDI media receiver. All right, that adds the receiver to the content area. We'll just make sure we name that NDI receiver 01. All right, this will tune into the broadcast. Now we need this to output to a texture that we can use in the scene. So I'll double click and you'll see video texture. And right now by default, it's none. So I'll just click on none and choose create new asset NDI media texture 2D. I'll double click on my NDI receiver folder to go in there and give this a name, NDI receiver 01 texture. Okay, so that is ready. And so we have the receiver and the texture for it to feed into. I can close this. Now we just need to display this somewhere in the scene. So I'm just gonna to go to my basic assets and bring out a plane actor. And W lets me move that around and up and over. And I will rotate with my left mouse button, middle mouse button, drag around and push this back a little bit. Hit E for rotate. I've got snapping on every 10 degrees. So click and drag 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way up to 90 degrees. So now that's perpendicular. And then R to scale and I'll just scale this up. So it's pretty big. And uh, just for safety measure, this is where the player startup is gonna be. I'm gonna hit W and just pull that back a little bit. And just as an experiment, I'll hit play. And so now you can see that that white plane is directly in front of the player. So now we can see that. All right. So uh, we need to get this texture onto that plane. So I'm just going to drag the NDI texture, release it right on the plane. And Unreal is real helpful. And it just created a material for us af named after that receiver texture. So it's the receiver one texture mat for the material. And so that's showing up there. Okay, so there's our chain of data. NDI receiver gets the broadcast, it puts it into the texture, and then the uh, texture goes into the material and the material goes on to the plane. So the final piece of this is that we need to activate this receiver when we start up our gameplay or start up our level, right? So if I hit play right now, nothing's happening because we don't have anything catching the start play event that would then feed the received video onto that texture. So let's set that up. Uh, I'm going to use an actor blueprint so that we can catch that event and trigger some event, some commands based on that. So I'll right click in our content area, choose a blueprint. I'm going to add that in. And in this case, it's an actor blueprint. So we'll just give this a name, NDI receiver 01, and I will give that an actor name at the end of that. Okay. 
NDI receiver 01 actor. Now it's in our content assets available, but it's not in the level, so it's not going to get any events. So we need to drag and drop that in there. It will not appear during gameplay, but this being in the level will now receive the events from the level. So let's uh, set up our little blueprint script to respond to that. I double clicked and I don't care about the 3D view. I'm interested in the event graph. So this is where we can set up our little commands to respond. Mainly we're interested in this event begin play. I'm using my mouse wheel to scroll back and just dragging those out of the way. Okay. So in order to do anything with this receiver in our blueprint, we'll need a component to uh, connect this asset into our blueprint. So I'm going to add a component here. I'll type NDI. And sure enough, in the list is NDI receiver component. NDI receiver component. And actually, let's put a 0, 1 in there so we're clear about which one this belongs to. Now, uh, the component exists in the blueprint right now, but it's not yet connected to the asset. So we need to do that through the properties over here. Just click on none and make sure we're not going to create a new one. We want to make sure we connect it to the existing NDI receiver 01. So I click on that and now these two are connected. So now we can start building up our little script. I'll drag out the component. It's got one pin coming off of it. So I'll grab that pin, drag and release. And we want to be able to start receiving. So I'll start typing the word start. And sure enough, we've got uh, start receiver under the NDI IO section. That's what we want to do is start that receiver. So that automatically populated the target. This is going to need another piece of information. It needs the connection information to the video feed itself. So let's grab this pin, drag backwards and release. And this time we'll search for, well, find. We want to find our network source. So here it is. NDI IO has find network source by name. That's what we want. Like this into position. And that in source name, that's what we really need to make sure we populate. This is going to be the name of that source, which was all caps. You are an ER phone, burner phone, and then space, open parenthesis, and then capitalized display, close parenthesis. We need that full name that we saw in Studio Monitor in order for this to work. So with that in place, now uh, this little bit of the script will work. Now, this little find operation does give us a return value. It's red, so that means it's true or false. So I can use my mouse wheel to roll back a little bit, left mouse to drag over. I'm going to take these two nodes and just push them over a little bit so we can work with this. I'm going to drag from the return value and release, and I'm going to branch based on if it's uh, successful or not. So branch. And so now because I dragged from the return value, I created the branch. It's next in the workflow. And if it's true, let's drag off from that and say print and say print string and change this word hello to be found it. And that'll appear on our viewport in the upper left to tell us that it did indeed find the video source. And then from there, we'll just continue on and actually start that receiver because everything was successful. The branch has a false output as well. So if this turned in a false value, you can drag out and do a different return message. So print. And I'll just change that hello to no source. So we know that uh, we only print the words no source if this failed. And then we're not going to continue with any workflow from here because we didn't find a source. Okay, so we have one last thing that we might as well do while we're here. While we're printing out error message, we get a return value for the start receiver. So let's drag from that pin. Again, we'll type in branch so that we can respond differently if this was successful versus failed. I'll drag from false and say print. In this case, I'll double click on that hello and say no joy, didn't work. We, on, we know we only get to this message if the uh, source was found, but for some reason we couldn't start the receiver. And then if true, then everything worked. So I'll do another print. And at this point, everything should be working. So I'll just say, should be working is our message. 
Okay, so that's it. That's the whole script. One last little thing is to connect that to our event begin play. That'll trigger everything to start off. And then we'll just zoom back here, select everything, and tap the letter C for comment so that we bracket all of that and then name that NDI receiver 01, that, 01 startup. Okay, so we are good to go. Let's hit compile, make sure that works. Yep, all good. Save, that worked. That should be everything. In theory, this will work. Let's hit play. Give it a second. And there it is. There is my live feed from my iPhone. Now, I'm not happy with exactly how this looks, so let's just uh, tune this up a little bit. I'll hit stop. And uh, left mouse button to pivot a little bit. And I'll select that plane. Obviously, it needs to be rotated, so E, rotate that 90 degrees. And then R to scale it. Let's squeeze it in left to right so it looks more like iPhone proportions. And then I'm not a fan of this little shininess that this material has so I don't want it to respond to light in the scene and I want this image to actually emit from this like it would be an LED screen TV screen so I'm going to double click on the material to set that up this is how the material is set up we've got the texture from the video broadcast that's being fed right now into base color in order to emit this I will just drag that RGB into emissive color and so now that color is going to effectively glow and then instead of responding to light, I want to change this to be an unlit material. So over here on the left, I'll just scroll down a little bit. Look for, oh, I need to select the material. And then right here, shading model. It's default lit right now. That's why it's responding to light. Just click that drop down and choose unlit. And now we'll save that. And as you can see, now we don't get that little shininess, uh, but we still see the image nice and clear. And let's hit play and again this is nice and live and let me just use my W key to or my mouse to W W W W there we go so there we go we can see the uh, little discord feed live from the iPhone so that's it hope this helps until next time have fun